If you're wondering what to make for breakfast, today I'm going to be showing you how to make mahamri and it's a very easy and detailed recipe. So I've started off by adding some lukewarm water to my jug. This is one cup. I'm going to add in some yeast and sugar. After five minutes, my yeast is bloomed. So I'm going to be adding an egg to the rest of my wet ingredients. Put this aside. To my bowl, I'm going to be adding in some all-purpose flour and to season my flour, I'm going to be adding in some cardamom, nutmeg and salt. Whisk in my seasoning into my all-purpose flour. Next, I'm going to be adding in my wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Go in with my hands and mix until everything is fully combined. While mixing in the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and you notice that the dough is super wet, add in one tablespoon of all-purpose flour at a time while mixing the dough but make sure not to add too much all-purpose flour because the mahamri will turn out very dense. Add in a tablespoon of vegetable oil. The oil is going to work wonders to the dough. The point of kneading the dough is very crucial, so make sure you knead for around five minutes until you get a very soft dough. At this point, the dough is ready. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon of cooking oil. And then I'm going to spread the cooking oil on the dough, tucking in the dough in the middle of the bowl. When ready, I'm going to cover my dough and let this sit for around one hour on a very warm place so that the dough can double up in size. This is exactly after one hour. My dough has doubled up in size. I'm going to gently punch the dough down and knead for around a minute. This is to remove the excess air in the dough. The best thing about the recipe is that you can make the dough a day before you make the mahamris and save up some time. Simply place the dough in the fridge and the dough will last up to 24 hours. So I'm going to lightly flour my countertop and transfer the dough to my countertop. Knead for about a minute until the texture of the dough is uniform. As you can see, the dough is not sticky at all and it's well rested, so it's going to make very awesome mahamri. Next, I'm going to cut the dough in half and into equal small balls. Once done with the dough, I'm going to start off by placing a frying pan over medium-high flame, add cooking oil and let the oil get hot. So I'll be working on my dough. So I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of all-purpose flour to my countertop. Next, I'm going to place my dough. Using a rolling pin, I'm going to roll out the dough horizontally and vertically until I have an even round shape. The trick here is to make the dough thin so that the mahamri can be hollow in the inside. But if you like your mahamri a little bit dense, make sure you roll out the dough a little bit thick. Cut the dough in half and into quarters using a knife. Next, I'm going to check on my oil by inserting a skewer. Once I notice bubbling, my oil is hot. I'm going to transfer my pieces of dough into the cooking oil carefully. Simply, I'm going to place the dough on the side of my pan and let the dough slide into the oil. That is the best way for not having yourself get burnt. 
I'm going to be frying my mahamris until light golden brown that is about 30 seconds to 1 minute per side. If your dough is a little bit thick, you can fry around 1 minute per side. Use a skimmer or tongs to flip the mahamris. Be careful not to punch the mahamri because you don't want soggy mahamri. As a kid, I used to love when my mother used to make these delicious beauties. Imagine waking up to some amazing aroma that filled up in your house. Yep, I would be the happiest. Now I enjoy making my hamry in the morning for my kids and they always appreciate. When frying the mahamri, you have to be very fast because you don't want the mahamri to burn. Because you are doing two tasks at the same time. You're frying the mahamri and also you are, you are rolling out the dough. So you have to be very fast. I'm going to flip my mahamri so that the other side can cook. And the mahamri are turning out very gorgeous. So I'm going to quickly finish up rolling my dough because this round is almost done. And the dough is smelling so good from the cardamom and nutmeg. So this mahamri are going to be very delicious. So I'm going to cut the dough in half and into quarters. Check on my mama. Check on my mahamri and they are ready. Drain off the excess oil and place in the rest of my mahamri. Just look at my mahamri. I also love making mahamri because they are never too sweet because the sugar is balanced with the salt. So you can pair with any dish and they'll still be amazing. Finish up on my last piece of dough. If you notice that your dough is sticking on the countertop, just sprinkle in a little bit of all-purpose flour and roll out the dough. Check on my mahamri and this is super quick. The mahamri are turning out very good. I always enjoy making mahamri in the morning because I always make some dough, my dough in the evening and place it in the fridge, wake up and just make mahamri. Just look at this. So this is my last round. You will definitely love how easy the mahamri is to make. And once you make this, they will be gone in a matter of minutes. Separate using my skimmer. Very nice. So it's been around 20 minutes of making mahamri in the morning. So this recipe, if you make the dough in the evening, you can wake up in the morning and make mahamri for your family. So it is not a must to make the mahamris during the weekend when you have the time. Just make the dough in the evening and you are all good to go. My mahamris have turned out very light and airy. As you can see, they are very hollow in the middle. And that's what I like about making mahamri. Once done frying the mahamri, make sure you serve the mahamri while still hot or warm. They are the yummiest at that point. I'm going to be pairing my mahamri with some chai and you can also pair this mahamri with absolutely anything, whether it's for breakfast or for lunch. You can have the mahamri for, for lunch as a side dish. So thank you so much for sticking until the end of the video and I hope you'll be trying out this very well detailed recipe and the, your mahamris will turn out so good.